Morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when and where you're viewing this. My name is Mike. I am the Crypto Liberal. Hey, do me a favor. If you have a spare moment, a spare moment, I'll wait. I'll wait. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you know when I'm putting out a new video. I would greatly appreciate it. I'm going to count down from three, two, one to give you that second to hit that button. Just find the button. Find the button. Three. Hit it. Three, two, one. Thank you. I appreciate it. So today, man, excitement is back. Bull run is back. The bulls are back out, right? For Bitcoin, for Bitcoin specifically. And why are they excited? They're not excited because Bitcoin suddenly found a new use case. They're not excited because Bitcoin is improving itself. They're not excited because Bitcoin suddenly found scalability, suddenly is, is moving from seven transactions a second to a thousand transactions. No, they're excited because number go up. Really? They're excited because they're making money. They're excited because all that Bitcoin, it, you know, the only thing that Bitcoin can excite people over is speculation. That number goes up as opposed to the alts, right? Cardano and Ethereum. There's big, huge news coming out. Scalability for, for Cardano. Moving to proof of stake for Ethereum. It, there's huge things. They're improving themselves. That's for the reason for excitement because they're going to change the world. They're, 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 they're have use cases. Bitcoin doesn't have that. And so people get excited when number goes up, plain and simple. And so the number went up. So it's a positive for Bitcoin, right? It's a positive. Um, I'm not going to rain on their parade too much. And especially because it's, you know, there's, there's some, there's some strong resistance on, on top of Bitcoin right now. So we'll, we'll look at all that. But if, if you truly believe in the in utility and making people's lives better, I mean, really, that's what crypto should be about: making lives of of the world, you know, people in the world's lives better. If that's what you're here for, right, and that's what crypto should be here for, then number go up should be meaningless. You should be looking at what is what is really changing the world what is making people's lives better and that is found in cardano that is found in in ethereum and and the use cases that each provide so that's why we're bullish on those on this channel so if you appreciate that give me a like give me a subscribe so let's start with the stock market right stock market had a great day today well let's start with the us the dxy first right dxy is down 0.6 percent that's a big move in the dxy so that's good news right the stock market up big, you know, NASDAQ over three, S&P and Dow about two and a half. So good news all around. And, you know, that's because crypto, it's good news for crypto because crypto is, you know, basically correlated with the stock market. It has been for months and months. So when the stock market is going up, crypto is going to go up and it's inversely correlated the DXY. So when that's going down, stocks and, and crypto are going to go up. So as long as that continues... Maybe we got some good news coming for, for crypto here. Um, so that's good, right? That's one good thing. But let's start with Bitcoin on, and as far as crypto is concerned, right? Bitcoin. Now, if you've been following my channel, right? You know, so, I mean, just yesterday we were talking about this blue line. And I, you know, I've had this blue line on here for weeks. And I said, well, we need to get above it. That's our first resistance. And I've been telling you we need to get above it for weeks. And, you know, back here on Ju July 8th, we got rejected off that blue line. Yesterday, we closed right below it. And then today we opened up. Like, it looked like we we're going to get rejected again. I mean, look at the wick down from that blue line. We were below it this morning. And then we've, we found some, found some juice in Bitcoin. And we, it looks like we're going to close above the blue line to start uh, to, you know, finally get above it. So that's, that's a good sign for Bitcoin and crypto overall, right? But if you've been following my channel for, you know, since I started this channel, I started this channel over 11 weeks ago, you know, this upper red line is, is huge as far as, as far as getting um, excited about Bitcoin again. And I've stated for weeks now that I'm not going to get excited about Bitcoin until we get above that red line, until we get above that red line and hold it for a week, two weeks, a month. And even after we get above it, we come back down and test it as support and make sure it holds as support. And only then will I get excited about Bitcoin. And why is that? Why is that? Well, let's look at, let's look at this chart. Why, why I say that? So we are in two descending channels. See the, that middle red line, what we were just talking about. And there's, an, there's a red line above it that has been resistance for two years. There's a 
a red line below it that has been support for two years, almost two years, right? And that, so we're in two descending channels and this, this, red, this red line right above us is really the middle line for the two descending channels that served as support and resistance for two years. So let's go back. Let's go back to the beginning of this red line, right? And see how consistently it has been holding as resistance and support. So, okay, so this is back, I mean, we're going back to February of, of 2021. Right at the start, you know, right when we made our first move up from, you know, 9, 10, 10 12,000, 20,000, up to our new all-time highs that we've set in this cycle, right? So, right, we, we broke past this red line to start with, and, and it didn't play much of a part in our first break of it. But here's where it really starts to come into play, right? So look at here. I mean, back in March of 2021, we came up to it, got rejected. That's really the first time this line is coming into play. Came up to it, got rejected, and only rejected for a few days, and then we broke above it, okay? But as we broke above it and we went up to, you know, our our all-time highs at the time, which was, you know, about 64,000, I believe, it's 62,000, right? We, or actually that wasn't when we set the high yet, but we, so we broke above it and then, but as we broke above it, we came back down and tested it as support. Look how perfectly that held as support, that red line. And it, we wicked down to it in March of 2021 and held as support. And that's when you knew we were off to the races. And that's when we went up to the new all-time high of 64,000, right? Okay, so there, there, it's serving as resistance and support to start 2021. After we set new all-time highs at 64, we came back down, look at that, and tested this as support, okay? Perfectly, bounced off of it, beautiful, right? Everybody thought, okay, that, it held as support, great, we're, you know, we went to $64,000, we corrected down to 47 here, but hey, we're gonna go off to the races. And you know, people people, you know, went all in here and, and that's when we had the big dump, right? So then we had a big huge dump down at past the red line and down to our lower line of, of support. And after we broke through it, you know, after we violated that red line, we were down below it for three months. Okay. But here's where it here's where it really starts coming into play. So we came up to it, right? came up to that red line, close to it. I mean, these red lines aren't exact. Remember, this is the Coinbase chart. So every exchange has a different number. But look at, we came up to it, essentially, here in July, after we had spent three months below it, got rejected. And got rejected for like a week. But then we were off to the races again, right? So we we're off to the races, we got above that red line, but look at this, we come back down and test it as support. Look how beautifully that held as support in September of last year, okay? So after it held a support, everybody piled into Bitcoin again. And that's when we were off to 69K, all the way up to 69K, right? So we get to 69K and then we get rejected and then we start falling back down, right? And back down to, what do you know? Our middle red line, support in January of this year. Held a support and after it held a support, right? Everybody's kind of got a little bit bullish again, and we had a little mini three-month rally. And what happened? We came back down again. And this is from May to June. May to June, it held as support. So you can see where this red line has held for as support and resistance for like almost two years, a year and a half, 18 months. It's held as, as a support and resistance multiple times. So... To me, right, and this isn't financial advice, to me, that line is going to be key to the next bull rally. We need to get above it. We need to get above it, get above it and hold it. We need to get above it, hold it, and test it as support. Only then will I, would I maybe turn bullish again on Bitcoin. I anticipate, this is not financial advice, right? I could be totally wrong. I anticipate when we get back to the red line right now, you know, it's, oops, right now it's at, you know, approximately, you know, 25,000, 25,400 around. I anticipate when we get back to that red line, we're going to get rejected. 
And we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that red line has nothing to do with it and just coincidence. But, you know, I showed you, right? It served as support multiple times, served as resistance multiple times. To me, that tells you it's a key trend line. And we'll see. We'll see. But I, I anticipate when we do finally get up there, maybe it's this week, maybe it's next week, maybe six months from now. And if it's six months from now, that line will be a lot lower. Either way, when we get to it at the first time we, we hit it, we're going to get rejected off it, I think. My opinion, not financial advice. We'll see. But um, so that's Bitcoin, right? Why I'm not excited about Bitcoin? For a couple reasons. It, the only reason people are excited about it is because number goes up. It serves no use case. It's not, a, it's not a, uh, an inflation hedge, obviously. We're at record inflation, 40-year highs for inflation. And Bitcoin is back where it was three years ago. Four years ago, you know, in the, the last bull market, essentially. I have a few thousand dollars higher right now, but so you know what I mean? We're at record inflation rates and, you know, there's there's all sorts of excuses to, as to why Bitcoin isn't serving as that inflation hedge right now. It's, it's just not. And it's because people got overly greedy. It's because people over-speculated. And, you know, we had Terra Luna and Three Arrows Capital and, and Voyager and Celsius. And I could go on, right? People got over leveraged, over speculative, speculative. And, and the only reason they were excited about Bitcoin is because the number goes up. And, and it will take a while, to, in my opinion, for it to gain some momentum again, because there's nothing being built. There's no use cases. The use cases are in Cardano and, and Ethereum and other, you know, similar protocols. So let's talk about those, right? Um, you know, since I started this channel um, over 11 weeks ago, every single day I've talked about it. this on this channel. Any new money put in at this point in, into ADA will outperform Ethereum and Bitcoin. And any new money put in into Ethereum will outperform Bitcoin. And I said that would happen by the end of the year, a year from now, and five years from now. And... Right now, already, six months left to the year, Ethereum and Cardano are outperforming Bitcoin. And how do I know that? Because I prove it. I seek to prove it to you daily. And I, I prove it on Twitter. Follow me there, at crypto underscore liberal. And I prove it here. And, and we do that by dollar cost averaging in every week. We put $100 in to each of those cryptos, ADA, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. And we've been doing it for 11 weeks. So we put $100 in weekly. We've been doing it for 11 weeks. So we put $1,100 into each of them. And how is that looking so far? Well, here it is. Look at it. We've put $1,100 in. And the only ones that are above, uh, you know, above ground right now that are actually making money from our dollar cost averaging are ADA and Ethereum. They're both above $1,100. Bitcoin is losing against the US dollar. And it's losing to ADA and Ethereum. So... Why Why be bullish on Bitcoin? It's alt season. We've been talking about that for weeks on this channel. It's alt season. ADA and Ethereum are outperforming Bitcoin. ADA and Ethereum are the only ones of these three that are above ground in, in our dollar cost averaging experiment, proving our hypothesis. And the only, and there's, and there's valid reasons to be excited about each of those protocols. You know, Vassal Hard Fork coming out, proving the scalability of, of, of Cardano. Ethereum moving to proof of stake, all happening within the next month or two, presumably, right? Unless there's a delay. So what are you excited about for Bitcoin? That that inflation will go up? Or is it now is it that inflation will, is going down? Because it will, it's going down. The next numbers are going to be reduced. And, you know, from that 9.1 we saw out last week, it's going down. Gas is going down, wheat is going down, all sorts of commodities are going down, inflation is going down. So now it's good for Bitcoin? I don't understand the use case. I don't understand the utility. But utility is all is all over the place in Cardano and Ethereum. So let's talk about those, right? Let's talk about about let's start with Cardano. I brought Cardano the chart, right? So I've been saying for eleven weeks on this channel that those will Cardano and Ethereum will outperform Bitcoin, right? Dollar cost averaging in, by the end of the year, it'll all perform. But there was one specific moment in time where I said, hey, this is the exact moment you want to get into with, in, into Cardano. And so let's look at that video. This is from like five weeks. Let's check it out. 
because it's so beautiful here. Here we go. It is so bullish. It's ADA compared to Bitcoin. And here's, let's see here. Um, I need the Coinbase chart. And I need the weekly chart. Now, this is weekly, right? I'm not trading on this on the 15-minute chart. Don't trade this the 15-minute chart. But look at this. There, I've never seen a more bullish chart. I'm sorry. This is just beautiful. Look at this descending wedge. Now, I've seen people on Twitter say, why would you invest in ADA? Look at all its mo all the money it lost against Bitcoin in the last, you know, what is this? When was this? August, since August of last year, it's just, it's just gotten crushed against Bitcoin, right? Yeah, it has. But I'm not, I didn't tell you to invest in it in August of last year, <clears throat> right? I didn't tell you that's the best time to invest. But I'm telling you right now what I'm doing, and you should do your own research and do your own financial advice, but I have never, I rarely see charts more bullish than this. A falling wedge after ADA just gotten crushed against Bitcoin, and it's starting to go up. And it could break this channel, this downward sloping trend line, right? This week it could break. I mean, it's bumping right up against it right now. So the rest of the, you know, these next four days or whatever it is, it's going to be important. But if this breaks above, man, ADA is going to go on a tear against Bitcoin. So these people are just telling you, well, you shouldn't put new money into ADA right now because look at all the money it lost against Bitcoin the last six months, seven, eight, nine months, ten months. That's not when you, I, I'm not telling you to invest back here. Invest down here, right? This is where you want to put new money in when it's after it's gotten crushed. I, I just don't understand. Just because something happened, it's happened for the last seven months doesn't mean it's going to continue. Okay? So that's what I'm doing. It is. Okay. So, right? Right? I told you at the exact moment that that ADA chart was looking bullish against Bitcoin. So let's look at the chart, the ADA chart right now, right? So ADA versus Bitcoin. And we wanna look at the Coinbase chart and again, weekly, right? So I told you back here this week, the week of May 30th, right? Remember that chart we were looking at? I told you right there, it was bullish against Bitcoin. And what's happened since then? I told you at 0 0.000019 Bitcoin. And right now we're at 0 0.00002230 Bitcoin. That's, you know, what is that? A 15% gain against Bitcoin? And everybody's excited about Bitcoin today, right? And rightfully so, it's gone up a lot. But look at the weekly to, for the ADA chart, ADA versus Bitcoin. It's green. ADA's outperformed Bitcoin this week. ADA's outperformed Bitcoin since I told you about it on this channel. I told you at the exact moment it was turning bullish. And that's not the only one. Every, almost every chart, all chart, is bullish against Bitcoin. This week even. Everybody's excited about Bitcoin, but look at, look at this week. It's green. The ETH versus Bitcoin chart is green. And this is, this is, you know, I told you again at the very bottom. I brought this to the channel back here, right when we were hitting the support line. And when one ETH was 0 0.052 Bitcoin. And right now it's at 0 0.06698 Bitcoin. That's, that's like a, more than a 30% gain, I think, or somewhere around there. It was 35% yesterday. It's come back a little bit. But again, I told you at the exact bottom, and it's green this week. Everybody's excited about Bitcoin, but Ethereum's having a better week. How about how about my the one that we've been losing on slightly? Dot versus Bitcoin, right? Everybody's excited about Bitcoin. But DOT's having a better week. And we're still slightly down on this trade. I got in at 0 0.00035. You know, it's it's coming back though. And I told you, I'm still bullish on this. It broke out. It hasn't come back. You know, the, that former resistance line, now support, hasn't broken support. We're still good. So DOT, DOT is having a better week. Well, how about Matic? Everybody's excited about Bitcoin, but why? Because look at Matic versus Bitcoin. Look at that. Matic's having a better week than Bitcoin. But everybody's excited about Bitcoin? Really? And Matic is crushing it since I brought it to the channel. I brought it to the channel back here, this last red candle. I said, hey, you might want to think about getting into Matic. I didn't. I chose DOT instead. Dummy me. But look at that. 
I brought it to the channel at the exact moment it turned bullish. If you appreciate that, <laughs> give me a like, give me a subscribe. Or how about, let's do one more. Ave. At last time I checked, Ave was having a slightly worse week than Bitcoin, but maybe not anymore. We'll check. Ave versus Bitcoin. And yeah, it's slightly red. But again, I told you this last week. Last week, I said, hey, you might want to think about Ave. And we had a, it had a, you know, if, if that red line now was resistance, if it holds its support, you might want to get in. And I didn't yet. I was waiting for it to maybe have a, a little comeback before I think about getting in. And maybe this is, maybe the little bit, bit of a comeback is happening. It's slightly red this week. But all, all the alt charts are still bullish this week even against Bitcoin. Alt season is here. Bitcoin is having a miraculous day, but it still can't, it still can't turn green against the alts. So, and, there, and there's huge resistance above us. So why get excited about Bitcoin? Why, why get excited about speculation when real world, you know, making the lives of people around the world is happening on Cardano and Ethereum? And Matic, right? Why get excited about speculation when our real goal should be about improving people's lives? That's my spiel for today, and I'm sticking to it. My name is Mike. I am the Crypto Liberal. I appreciate each and every one of you that watches. I would appreciate you hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, and, and supporting the channel. Thanks for your time. I will chat more with you tomorrow. My name is Mike. I'm the Crypto Liberal. Good night.